Hello, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today, we are looking at another beer from my shipment from BC. This one is from the Driftwood Brewery, the Driftwood Brewing Company. This is uh, Sartori Harvest IPA. Sartori Harvest IPA. This is 7% alcohol by volume. It's a strong beer. I'm just looking if there's anything I can actually even make out on this. Just the way uh, Kraft brewed in small batches. Yeah, not really anything to read here. Uh, yeah. Okay, it is a, uh, as it says, uh, it's a harvest IPA, it is a wet hopped IPA, so the, uh, the hops were going basically as fast as possible from the vine to the brew kettle. What the fuck? Hmm. It smells beautiful. Hmm. Michelob Goblet. Now, like, um, I can't say all because I don't know enough about Driftwood, but like all Driftwood products I have had, this is unfiltered. I've not been a big fan of the Driftwood products I have had. Uh, they were all well made, but they weren't to my, uh, my palate. Um, like Fat Tug, uh, Belgian IPA, that type of stuff, is what I've had. Uh, look, a little, little unfiltered, a brassy color though. It does have that orangey gold hue. Uh, nice bright white head. No real snap crackle pop, so it's not really going anywhere. Let's give her a sniff, shall we? Okay. Passion fruit. Passion fruit, cantaloupe, touch of lemon. Passion fruit, cantaloupe, touch of lemon. Some orange, and a little bit of that almost pine oil uh, finish. Oh. Out of the glass, a lot of orange. The passion fruit and uh, the passion fruit really coming out of the bottle. The orange really coming out of the glass. Oh, fuck yeah, let's try it. Cheers. Wow. Wow. Oh my god, the best part about this. The best part about this exact beer right here is that it feels like you're going to get this big resiny punch in the back of the throat because it does start building up. And then it disappears right away. Medium bodied. Full flavored. Drink it. And blood orange just explodes in your mouth. You get so much blood orange, it's not funny. You get so much passion fruit, it's not funny. No. Oh, man. And again, there is that little resiny uh, pine oil bitterness right at the back of the throat that's there. Then boom, it's gone into fruitiness. And a little bit of cantaloupe and a little bit of honeydew. Uh, lots of melon, lots of tropical fruit. With a little bit of a resiny background. This is great. This is grade A stuff right here. And the worst part about this beer 
the worst part is it is 7% alcohol and you would not be able to tell that if you put this in front of me and uh, put it in a blind taste test with say uh, Mad Tom and uh, Naughty Neighbor and I don't know Bone Shaker's a little higher so let's say uh, Crazy Canuck which is what now Canuck Pale Ale excuse me and a bunch of other Ontario IPAs I would not think this is one to two percent higher than all of those I wouldn't think it uh, this is this is an amazing an amazing beer an amazingly well made beer if you can get your hands on Satori Harvest IPA you really should one of the best excuse me one of the best BC has to offer and uh, this makes me bow to what BC has to offer because this beer is uh, heads and tails above a lot of IPAs here. I'm not going to say all double IPAs, but a lot of double IPAs here. Uh, probably the best wet hopped beer I've had uh, across Canada, in all honesty. But I mean, you got to figure that wet hopped ales aren't the biggest thing here in in Ontario. I mean, what do you get? You get Nickel Brooks with their, usually with Burtwell, but I think this year they use Simcoe and Chinook. Um, Trafalgar does one. Uh, there's a lot of breweries that do it, but they're not as uh, as mainstream as some others. So I've I've seen I I've seen more wet hopped pale ales from BC in this box than I have all across Ontario thus far, and this is by far one of the best wet hopped IPAs I've had. And again, it hides the alcohol so well. It is just bursting with fruity flavor. It has that little bitterness that just comes up the back of your throat and then just disappears. This lets you know that you're drinking an IPA while still being an amazingly drinkable beer. And I know, oh my god, who should I drink up all that? That's, uh, that's basically me trolling the, uh, the beer writers that get angry with certain words like drinkable, uh, suds. They hate suds. I hate suds too. But there, there's... <laughs> There's keywords that make them go insane, and I just use one of them, and I really don't care because it is. It's super drinkable, and I know, oh my god, it's wet, it should be drinkable. Anyone that says anything wet should be drinkable hasn't tried to drink certain things that you really shouldn't drink or certain beers that really disagree with you because I've had my throat start to close when I'm drinking things that my body doesn't want to drink. I gag when I drink tomato juice. That's not all that drinkable for me. I gagged when I drank chiladas. Not all that drinkable for me. I've gagged on some IPAs. Not all that drinkable for me. I've gagged on some uh, some alcohols. Not all that drinkable for me. And they've all been wet. So fuck you with your don't use the word drinkable. Fuck you guys. This is a great fucking beer. I am going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. That's what I'm going to give it. And as an Imperial IPA, it gets the slow golf clap. Thank you, Steve, for sending this. Driftwood Satori. Satori Harvest IPA. Bang. Let's try and turn this off. Bye bye